Cancer for five years with treatments for more than three years was not easy. Her greatest suffering, however, was not the cancer, but the fact that she could no longer help others as much as she wanted to. Worse than that was that she had to receive help from others. She had to live long enough to see Shana's wedding and, see, and hold her new grandson, Barat. The last few weeks, we experienced the blessing of living so close to all of our children and grandchildren and constantly bonding together. Kibudavayim. I thought I knew what the meaning of Kibudavayim was until I witnessed Rebecca take care of her parents. My mother had an Alzheimer for more than a decade, and her father who needed help for so many years and every Friday night at our Shabbat table. They both led wonderful Mahubad lives, living and dying in their apartment, thanks to Rebecca. What do you do when you lose the love of your life? I know Rebecca for more than 50 years. I don't remember life without Rebecca and cannot imagine living without her. How will I function without her? <laughs> Professionally, but also help me and our children become better people, thinking more of others, giving more to others, and being more sensitive, being more sensitive and empathetic to others. I must recognize Professor Nefushtan, who kept Rebecca alive so much longer with a good quality of life. Special thanks to the doctors and nurses at Adassa, Wilson Medical Center, Maccabi Home Care, and Rani Sabar and his hospice staff who made our final journey much more pleasant. A special thanks to you, Jackie, who helped Rebecca anticipating her every need. So, what do you do when you lose an angel? When you lose someone from a different world? And when you lose the love of your life? 
You thank Hashem for all the wonderful years He gave to you as a present. You continue Rebecca's legacy by continuing what she would do, making your family a priority, making sure you have their back, making the extra effort to get together and getting your kids together. Doing for others and trying to think of others before yourself, easier said than done, especially if you're not Rebecca. Just when you think you're doing a good job, think about how Rebecca would do it and you'll do it even better. I thought I would end my hesped with these words, but Rebecca once again decided to help us all by sharing parting words to comfort all of us. And these are her words. To my beloved family and friends, when I was first diagnosed nearly five years ago, I decided to begin my departure for Olam Hazeh. Now that I feel closer to the end of my life, I want to tell you all that, first of all, I had the best life I could have dreamt of. A fulfillment of my dreams, even more than I dreamt about, and then some. Marrying the right partner, raising four spectacular kids, my career part-time, living in Israel, seeing my children find the right partner, and rewarding me with the loves of my life, my precious and loving 12 grandchildren. I built an amazing group of friends that are like family and was so lucky that music and dance helped me to get through the hard days. So I wanted you all to know that this cancer was a minuscule part of my totally wonderful life. And even with the cancer, I was able to appreciate even more all the good that I have been blessed with by Hashem. The outpouring of love, support, encouragement, massages, food and caring I received made these years bearable, and I was blessed to have experienced this. So my message to all of you is when I'm gone, cry a little, but then remember that I am still here inside each of you, and please smile, sing or dance when you think of me. Loving you all forever, Rebecca. It is hard to imagine a world without Rebecca Sprung. Rebecca, my love, I will miss you dearly. Please forgive me for not taking care of all of your needs and not being more patient. The Gemara in Brachot and David Elamral brings two sayings. The first, then later, Maharsha explains that the Gemara first uses Amet after the dead when referring to those that are no longer with us. But then when referring to Talmidei Chachamim, it refers to their coffin, Katan, and not to them. As Talmidei Chachamim lived beyond their death through their words, we don't end their life. My mother didn't realize she was quoting this, Maharsha, when explaining her situation to my children. She explained that there was no reason for them to be afraid, but rather everyone should be happy. She lived a great life, and all of her dreams came true. Unfortunately, her body couldn't last longer, but as she emphasized again, when saying goodbye to us all, she would always be with us, no matter what, and live through us. Therefore, this is really a celebration of her life. So I won't be giving a eulogy, but rather saying a few things I learned and think we can all learn from my mother. Number one, sing. Mom grew up in a musical family, with my Zeti going on the Yom Norim to Be'a Chazan and taking her with him. This would prove a potential pitfall for my father, who has many other strengths, and I count singing as one of them. <laughs> many times she felt that she was better than some of the Chazanim that she heard, which was probably right. Two, don't be ashamed of your age. Unlike many women, my mom was never bashful or embarrassed of her age but was always willing to say how old she was and say it with pride. She was 70 years old. Therapy is not a bad word. If you need therapy, then go. There's nothing wrong with that. We have gone as a family after Aliyah and also individually. It can only help and is highly recommended. Love of Israel. No one loved Israel more than my mom. When she came here for the year in college, she broke, broke up with my father again in order to meet an Israeli as she knew that that was the best chance she had to make it here. 
Both well, her and my father always say that they almost didn't make it, but only by chance that we did. In the end, she caused not only our immediate family to make Aliyah, but also dragged along both the Bermans and Millers too. This really came to a crescendo when her life ended during this Yom Azikaron and Yom Atzimut period, which my mother herself thought was very appropriate. Number five, spoil your children. Growing up, my mother would do almost anything for her kids. When I was in high school, which was in walking distance to our house and it was raining, all of my friends would run to ask me if they could get a ride as they knew that my mom and no one else would be picking me up. Always look on the bright side. There's a lot going on in life. You can focus on the bad or focus on the good. Always appreciate what you have and focus on the good. This was my mom's credence, and she even saw the good in her getting cancer. For others, it was a lot harder. My mom was a great balabasta. It was always more than enough food, regardless of how many people were coming for Shabbat, or regardless of when we actually told her that they were coming. There was always room for more. Many, many, many people over the years have said, oh yeah, I want to stay at your house for Shabbos, or yeah, I stay by you for Shabbos. He used to say, "Might the very many people who were there, most of us have no idea. Kibbutz <laughs> Afei. As many of you know, my mother's parents moved to Israel when my father's Alzheimer's progress. Her untiring devotion to her mother and then later to her father was the perfect example of how one should treat their parents. We can only hope, mommy, that we keep close to what you showed to your parents. How to be a good friend. If I asked who was my mom's best friend, I'm sure many people here would stand up and even some who wish they were here and yell, me. Whether it is from childhood, high school, college, work, dancing, or any other walk of life. She had a very close relationship with so very many people. I used to say it was reciprocal. Number 10, family. Nothing is more important than family. No matter what, you always need to be there for them. My mother was always there for her family and also for those of her friends that became family. You can ask Carla, Shmuley, Brophy, or Gideon. There's almost no difference between any of them and me, Nina, or your son. But not only as a mother-in-law, also as a sister-in-law in the name. She saw them all as her own siblings and children, regardless of whether they were close by or far away. The relationship between my mother and her siblings is beyond words. When my Aunt Helen came to stay with my mom and be with her at the end, which turned out to be for about five months, it wasn't clear who was helping who, and in the end, it was clear they were both helping each other. Her family was always treated at least one level up. Second cousins were first cousins, cousins were siblings, and so on. This explains why we have such a close relationship with our entire extended family. How to be a grandparent. Her one real pride and joy in light of her life is being a son. Nothing brought her more happiness than her grandchildren. The pinnacle was, of course, when Barack Legend made it on the scene, bringing the current total to an even dozen. My children, Akiva, Nate, Gabrielle, and Gila, together with all of their cousins, really were very privileged and lucky to call here their stuff. How to be a spouse. My mom was the epitome of Azer Connecto. She took upon herself the entire household so my father could focus and become the world-renowned physician he is today. And she took extreme pride in being his wife. She was the essence of a nation's time. My parents really complimented each other well, knew when to give each other space, and truly appreciate each other every single day. And finally, keep eulogy short. <laughs> I was the luckiest of all my siblings. As it was I who made you a mother, and I had the privilege to be your son for the past 46 years. Thanks to all of you who davened for my mom. We really appreciate it and are sure it helped both my mom and us. I wanted to thank my siblings, which obviously includes their spouses, as well as Jackie, who has become part of our family, and my Aunt Helen, who each in their own way helped take care of my mother. Something like this can tear a family apart but it brought us all that much closer. Carla, thank you for being such a good daughter in law. You and my mother had such a loving relationship, and I know you both felt so blessed to have had each other. I would like to thank my father. He took over every aspect there was. Your true devotion and love came pouring through. There is no doubt that Mommy never would have made it this long without all of your efforts. Mommy, we promised to look after Abba, just as he looked after you. Thank you, Mom, for everything that you taught and sacrificed for us. I know you said we made you proud, and I am sure that you will continue to look down on us, and I hope we continue to make you and Abba proud. We will be happy. We will enjoy and appreciate our lives. 
We will love and be there for each other. And that is great. And then we smoke down some love. It's all okay. <laughs> yes, I'm the short one. <laughs>
I love you because you as my father. As you said, Mom, there is no tragic here. It's a good life. You always say, look forward, not back. So we will remember you with a song and a dance. So take a walk, a run, or dance a jig, as she would say. Enjoy the birds chirping. We'll breathe. Even on the most challenging days, find the good and try to laugh. Live life well. Mommy, I want to ask you, Priscilla. I'm sorry for anything I've done to hurt you. Thank you for being you. And now you can dance. I love you. <laughs> well, the past few months together have been unforgettable. And I can't think of anything we didn't talk about. It was a coffee walks and many hours together on your porch, my garden, we opened our hearts to each other. We discussed, we discussed your hopes and dreams, my childhood, parenting advice, and in fact, some of those conversations even made it to the national TV news. <laughs> I'm quite sure we covered everything. Since there is not much left to say, I want to use the next five minutes to ask you for forgiveness and tell you one last time how much I love you. But before I do that, I want to thank two very important people. First, my aunt Helen. I can't describe your relationship in words. Anyone who saw you saw something very unique. Very special with you. And Helen, I want you to know how grateful we are to you for comforting my mother through these extremely rough and painful days. And in your special way, you're the only one in the world who can do this. Through this beautiful commitment of yours, an indescribable relationship, you kept te te teaching us the importance of being there for one another. Parts of family that meant the world. The second person I want to thank is Abba. Abba, there's no doubt in my mind that the only reason Mom was okay to dance, to sing, and all the different family symptoms, and not just the past couple of weeks, she gave her all of her loved ones. This was only because of you. Your care and dedication to mom, we learned so much. Thank you. Mom, this is my moment to thank you for being the best mom in the world. All my friends here can attest to that. I also want to thank you for being such an amazing mother to my brother and the best soft to our voice. Your unique relationship with Ruffy, which I like to call her my fifth child, has been a gift for both of us. You met Ruffy exactly 20 years ago. You flew all the way to Los Angeles to find this girl who I was dating from LA. And you found a daughter. You have given both of us more than we could have ever dreamt. You were with us through hardships, transitions, our moves across cities and oceans. You are always there, even right outside the delivery of all of our boys, <laughs> holding them, and also holding us. <clears throat> Making sure always to take care of us, giving us advice when needed, even if we didn't know at the time. Making our years together living right next to you in your life to some of the most formative 
an important years of our life and our children's life. Adab, Gilad, Lev, I want you to know how much your Safta loved you. You brought her so much joy. Your smiles, singing, love for each other gave her so much, more than you can ever imagine. I want you to remember Safta as an energetic, wise, and giving person she was. Mom, when you met new diabetic parents, you always made sure to tell them not to neglect the healthy ones. And I was the neglected healthy one back then. Mom, I want you to know that today, I don't feel neglected at all. I feel your love. I feel your care. And with the past six months, even with all the hardships that you were going through, our relationship kept on growing. I never felt closer to you than ever. I want to end with a short WhatsApp I sent you after one of those meaningful conversations. I wrote, Mom, thanks for a great day and for opening your heart to me. I will always remember these times I have with you. As hard as it is for me to see you like this, like this on days like this, it makes it all worth it. I love you very much, Mom. You will always be with me no matter what. I just need to close my eyes and listen to a good song. You replied to me. How can I leave you? I haven't responded to that message yet. Mom, I want to respond to that message now. Oh. <laughs> I love you now, so. So, I'm the youngest. So I knew everything I would want to do. <laughs> I will actually keep it short. Thank you for being the best mother in the world. The person I am today is all things to you and all. You are the rock of this family, the glue that holds us together. There was never a need to communicate amongst ourselves. You would let everyone know what was going on. <laughs> we will definitely have to put more work into communicating as a family. I know I wasn't easy. I wasn't an easy child to raise. First of all, I want to apologize for that. I know you forgave me before I even apologized. I hope I will have as much patience for my son as you had for me. And I was lucky enough to have you at my wedding, meet my son, and even hold him in your arms as he smiled and laughed with you. So thank you, Barak and Abba, for keeping mom alive to be able to share these experiences. Mom. <laughs> At Barak's weight, I wish for him to continue in the footsteps of his namesakes. More than one. At the time you weren't sure how long you had to live. Although we should have known you wouldn't go down at that point. And I had you in mind as well. And we named him. So Barak Bet Eishkuf has the same letters as your name. Barak. Stuff that would have taught you some really important life lessons. I will make sure that you follow in her footsteps by instilling them in you. Starting with family is everything. Remember where you came from and continue the family legacy. Do things for others, dance and sing as much as possible, 
and love your country. Israel is our home. So but I even though your stuff man, is no longer <laughs> No, your stuff is no longer physically here. <laughs> if you didn't get the experience, you didn't get the opportunity to experience the amazingness of Safta. She is now a part of you and will always be with you. And she will be with every single one of us whenever we need her. So, Mom, I think it's fair. To say that you definitely left an impact on this world and your influence will continue to be carried out by many more generations to come. Who is wise, she learns from every person. 
Charlie was always wise, modest, disciplined, hardworking, dedicated, a devoted husband and father. But especially during Rebecca's illness, he has been her protector, respecting her wishes, caring for her with her best interest at heart, and with the skill of a world-renowned professor. Charlie is the Chacham that is referred to in her table. He is the student par excellence who learned from Rebecca the subtleties, nuances, all that make him the best version of himself, the very best Abba and Saba anyone could ask for. And so Rebecca lives on to Charlie, who she admired, respected, trusted, and loved with her heart and soul. Recently, one of Rebecca's younger grandchildren asked her if she was afraid to die. Rebecca smiled and said, no, I had a wonderful life. You, Rebecca's children and grandchildren, were the biggest and best part of Rebecca's wonderful life. Each one of you was her favorite. <laughs> and each one of you made all her hopes, prayers, and dreams come true. <laughs> Hear me? <laughs> okay, good. If I start everything I wrote, I want to say one thing that I was planning on saying, but it just came to me while I was listening to everyone. My staff they gave me a bracelet before I drafted it. It says it in a puzzle. I just want to thank Hashem for this time. Thank you for real for giving me someone who it's so hard to say goodbye to. <laughs> I just think about how to say goodbye to you. What's it time for me to say? What memories I want to bring up? I'm slowly, slowly coming to the conclusion that the hardest thing for me about this goodbye isn't goodbye, isn't saying goodbye to the memories, it's saying goodbye to the way you made me feel. The voices of the voice of myself that only you could see. <laughs> you made me feel like no one else can. My whole life could be falling apart, and one hug from you makes it all go away. Those hugs of that dog. You're telling me I'm going to get over it, and it's only a blip in the way. I can't imagine my life without you. I feel like myself without you. You see through me. The amazing part of all of this is that you don't only make me feel this way. You make so many people around me feel seen and more. I strive, I strive to all that for you. Now, I could keep talking about what an amazing person you are, but I feel like everyone who is here is aware of you being a superhuman. I'm sure that not everyone who is here is aware of you being a super Safta. Here's some of my favorite things about Safta. All my friends call us Safta too. Tons of Safta days, we're shopping together and just complaining about money. <laughs> I'm blaming Safta for everything that's wrong for me. <laughs> Every small conversation ends up being a poor motivation for speech. She always shows up with yummy cheeses and homemade food. No one who isn't part of the family will really understand the value of Safta's potato cook. She makes sure you have a strong relationship with all your family, even your other grandparents. Cuddling in bed with them. Sleeping at home for Shabbat and bringing friends over. Christy I guess that's like the only thing that made me Israeli. <laughs> Always getting speech therapy lessons, back rubs, sleeping on the little couch in your bedroom, coming home after a long day at school and seeing my room suddenly clean, <laughs> smiling every time I get a message from you, just like some stupid boy is texting me. <laughs> Going out. Growing up in a house, when you ask why we do things, it's because Safta does this stuff. Just ask Safta. <laughs> Understanding what real Zionism is. You know, butter cookies. Getting a call the night before any exam to calm you down. Going to Eddie to get a haircut. Always wishing to have a long fill of nails. When people see you with me, getting surprised, and they get surprised that you're my grandma, not my mom. 
Basically, I have had enough playing with you. Selfish. I got the best of you. I got to know you, young and healthy. I got to go dancing with you and see you glow. I promise I'm going to do everything I can to remember those times. This is who you truly are, and I am so grateful. I got this choice to be part of your journey. Johnny, she wouldn't like how I pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> you are my role model. You make me a positive human who appreciates the little things in life. My greatest qualities I got from you, and I couldn't be more grateful for that. Thank you for raising my strong mommy and leaving her with me. I couldn't do any of this without her. Thank you for teaching me how to live and how to die. Thank you for appreciating every moment on the way. Thank you for installing so deep in me your love to Israel. For teaching me to surround myself with people who make me feel appreciated. One day in Hina, I got a phone call and Tessa just told me, Zoe, make sure to marry and surround yourself with people who appreciate, who appreciate you. And then she said, Saba appreciates me more than anyone in the world. <laughs> and I'm so lucky to have it. <laughs> and that was probably the most important. It's showing me an amazing connection with your sister. There's really nothing I want more than that. <laughs> I'm going to keep walking every day to live your values. And I know I won't disappoint you. Come on, I could deal with this. I'm not actually saying goodbye to you. I'm going to say hi every time I see the sunset. Akavia ben malade no mes takel bishlo shavari bena tabari da berada wa ibata blana taule belif demi atati bitendi mesospo ga ibata Thank you.